right there, baby. Are we rolling? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the borough of Queens. We are here in an awesome new neighborhood called Flushing. It's not a new neighborhood. It's a new neighborhood for me. It's my first time here. So we're exploring Flushing today. This is in part of my series to cover all the notable neighborhoods in New York City. You should subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video because we're literally covering this entire city, top to bottom, everything that you need to know. So this is your everything need to know guide about the neighborhood of Flushing here in Queens. Before we do anything, let's roll the intro. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, ever since I put out my Chinatown episode here in New York City in Manhattan, you guys have non-stop recommended flushing, and I actually debated on making an episode here, but Jacob over here convinced me that this place definitely deserves its own episode. Yeah. And he's back with us. Jacob hey. Carlson, King of the Vlogs, is here. What's going on, Jacob? Are you excited for today? I'm super excited. Not only about Flushing, but also Flushing Meadows Corona Park, which is like one of my favorite places in New York City, and the food. You can already smell it. It smells oh, amazing yeah. around here. So the second you get here, we're standing on the intersection between Main Street and Roosevelt Avenue. This is like the main hotspot for Flushing, Queens. It's kind of like the main part of the Chinatown. And Flushing isn't only a Chinatown. There's, there's more to the neighborhood itself, but kind of the main attraction here is the fact that it's a very, very like true core Chinatown, right Jacob? Yes, I mean most of the people that live out here are of Asian ethnicity. There's not a lot of uh, people who aren't that live in this area and that's why it, it feels so immersive. Yeah, it's like literally we got right off the subway station and it already feels like you're in a hustling bustling East Asian city. We are going to head right now to get food immediately because we're very hungry and uh, we're gonna go chop down on some delicious Asian food, so let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting off hot here. We are heading into the new New World Mall. <laughs> so Jacob said there's a food court down here, yeah? Yes, there is a food court with a bunch of delicious food options in the basement, but also on the top floor, which we're not gonna eat at, but I'll show you, is this giant restaurant, which is apparently also really good. I've never actually eaten there, but I'll show you, it looks really cool. And then there's a bunch of shops in between. I'm super hungry and excited, let's go. So we just entered Jacob, I mean, Jacob said it was gonna be authentic, but I didn't expect this. This literally looks like a mall from Japan or the Philippines or Korea or Eastern Russia, wherever I've been, where it's super authentic. And it, I'm just surprised. I'm surprised at the level. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got food. So I have to say, like, there are some, like, little stores in here or restaurants that literally their menus, there's nothing in English. It's just completely in, I mean, I, I don't know if it's Cantonese or Mandarin, I can't read it, but it's just completely in another language. So there's not even an attempt to really to attract somebody who doesn't speak their language, which is cool because it means it really is authentic. Um, even in this situation, I couldn't really understand what anybody was telling me when I was trying to get my food. But we have here some lamb and carrot dumplings, which I've never had before. I've had beef dumplings and fish dumplings and vegetable dumplings, but never lamb and carrot, so it looks really good. All right, so we're gonna douse this in some soy sauce. It is gonna hurt because it's gonna be hot. I can't really stop it, but let's try. Wow, that is delicious. That's gotta be one of the best dumplings I've had in New York. Uh, commemorate military victory. All right, that was delicious. Let's head off. So this is kind of the main section of the mall. Once again, very reminiscent and authentic to any Asian mall that I've ever been to. Um, so definitely worth checking out. Like, uh, Flushing is a little bit ways away from you know the main parts of New York City that you're gonna come to as a tourist, but gosh, is this cool. This is really, really cool. This is exactly like every mall in Hong Kong I went to as yeah. well. Every, like everyone. It's 100% authentic. So where we're going now is the restaurant at the top of this mall. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm sure we can find out, put it on the screen or whatever, but um, it's a big restaurant and it's, it looks really cool. I've heard the food is really great, but I haven't personally eaten here yet. So if you want to come visit a really fancy schmancy restaurant in this mall, you know where to go, top floor. So we've emerged out of the mall now and we're just taking a nice little walk on Main Street. Like I mentioned, Main Street is the main street here in Flushing and it's where the main Chinatown area is and it's where all your stuff is gonna be. So we're gonna take a walk down here, kind of see the sights and stuff. We got a really cool location coming up that I wanna show you guys, but uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a stretch, a bit of a walk to get there. So we're just gonna keep kind of walking forward up here on Main Street. All right, so we just hit up a bakery. The name of the bakery is Maxon Bakery. It's not necessarily a bakery that like I'm recommending. I just stopped in, but the thing is with like Asian bakeries, you can get all these buns and stuff. The way that it typically goes is you get a tray and you kind of fill up the tray with stuff you want. What I got here is a taro filled bun. This is kind of a good uh, little maybe dessert option. So you can kind of get buns that are filled up with different sweet fillings like red bean. This one is taro. Taro is like this sweet potato purple yam thing. And uh, when I rip this apart, it should be filled with this delicious taro filling. 
That's super good. The bun itself is almost like a brioche bun. It's like super buttery and sweet. The inside filling is just delicious. It's $1.75, so you can't go wrong with that. All right, so we have another cool location here on Main Street. It's called the Landmark Quest Mall. And it's sort of a food court. And as you can see, it's very, very busy right now here. Lots of people <laughs> rushing by. We're gonna head on in and see what kind of foods and stuff they got here. So I, we were walking around here, we were just shooting, and the people from the Taiwanese Wheel Cake House, they uh, gave me a free cake. It's, it's so cool. I've never had one of these before. Not that I think of. I feel like I've had something similar in Japan, but it looks really good. So let's let's try it out. Ooh. Oh, that looks like custard as well. Let's give that a bite. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. And as you can see by this fantastic B-roll, it was made right in front of us, like on the spot. Oh my God, Jacob, you need to try this. How good is that? It's very good. What I like about it is it's not too sweet. It's not like overwhelmingly sweet. Yeah. It's actually really balanced. All right, so what is right on the side of me right now is the Flushing Quaker Meeting House. So basically this is part of a mile called the Flushing Freedom Mile. And it's kind of a historical mile that uh, crosses a bunch of historical buildings. In Queens, there's a lot of old architecture and stuff you can find from like the beginnings of the United States of America. And this is one of those spots. You can kind of walk the, uh, the, the Flushing Freedom Mile and see a bunch of really cool sites. So this is just one of those sites that is here. All right, guys, so we are coming to the place right now where I have, this is the thing I've anticipated most out of Flushing. Probably one of the top things I wanted to see in Queens in general. You guys know from my various travels around the world that I've developed a sort of uh, like obsession with Buddhist temples. All right, so this place is known as the Hanma Um Zen Buddhist Center here in Flushing. We're gonna head on in there. Honestly, I can't really find much information because this place is not a tourist spot. It's also not centrally located anywhere near anything for like a tourist in New York. So think about this as like your first inside scoop to a really amazing piece of architecture here in New York City. We just walk in through like two driveways right now? That's what it seems like. I don't know, maybe these houses are are occupied by people who work at the temple. I'm not sure. But you can you can just walk right in. We just did. Alright guys, so we are here in front of the temple. It is absolutely incredible. I should make a note, it is open for visitors 100 percent We found out by too friendly. I don't know if they're monks or just people who live on the residence here, but it kind of looks like the people who, who upkeep this whole area. And they offered us a tour, they offered us entrance inside, but just you know, if you're coming here to Flushing, you can totally go in here. And yes, this place isn't specifically a Chinese-oriented, you know, cultural thing, but, um, you know, it is the most incredible, hands down, the most incredible Buddhist temple I've seen in the United States, maybe outside of Hawaii. And uh, I love it. This is so freaking beautiful. All right, so your next kind of recommendation here in Flushing is the Queens Historical Society. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of old American architecture here from like the beginnings of the United States of America. But uh, this is the kind of the first place. It's called the Kingsland Homestead. Jacob, you got anything for us about this place? 1785. It's not very interesting. It was just from a Quaker farmer. He, he uh, built the house on his property that his son-in-law bought, but it's really cool. Yeah and you can just walk right up to the door. So our next kind of site within the Queens Historical Society area here is the Bone House, the Boone House. We're not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but it's an old house from 1661. It's super old. Definitely make sure that you check it out. It's cool. I'm pretty sure that at some point in the seasons, you can actually enter and go inside, but right now it's locked behind the gate. So check it out when you're down here. So this is another location. I'm going to overlay B-roll of stuff that's not this museum just because we're not going to go over there because it's a little bit out of the way right now and it's closed. But this place is called the Velker or Vol Volker Orth Museum. Um, it's also another house-ish museum. It's like a house that's been renovated to a museum. Got a Victorian garden and a bird sanctuary inside and it's been restored from the 1880s. It's a museum that you want to check out if you're looking to come and explore kind of the history here in Flushing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Queen's Botanical Garden. We are getting close to finishing up this video. So right now we're getting close to the area of the Flushing Meadow Corona Park. It's a big extravagant area where there's a lot of attractions here in the Flushing area. But um, this doesn't actually go into it, but it's kind of like right beside it. It's the Queen's Botanical Gardens. It's another one of those giant botanical gardens in New York City. So if you want to check it out, you got Queen's Botanical Gardens, come get yourself a ticket. It's like six bucks to enter. We're going to head off to our other areas. So we'll see you in the next one. Tell us a little bit about Flushing Meadows Corona Park. I am happy to. It's one of my favorite places in New York. I think the reason it's so special and I love coming here is because there's just tons of history. They have had two, we have had two World's Fairs in this park, uh, but both of them were here in this park and there's still a bunch of remnants of that. This big lake, sort of empty and gross right now, but was the remnants of that. That little house in the middle was where they they uh, had a light show that they, I think with lasers and projections that they show uh, on the lake. 
Um, we'll show you some other stuff, the Unisphere, the New York State Pavilion. I just love it so much because there's so much history here. So we've made it to kind of the main plaza here where the Unisphere meets the Queens Museum and kind of this whole mall reaches down. But um, we're gonna hand it off to Jacob because he actually the actual info about this place. We're gonna hand it off to Jacob now because he's the info master and he can tell us all about this place. So the Unisphere was built for the 1965 World's Fair because at that time we had the space race going on and a lot of uh, innovations in telecommunications, the world was becoming a smaller place. And so the idea behind this was to have, to, to show and showcase a unified planet. One that where everybody's working together and it's a smaller world where we're all working towards the greater goal of of being an awesome place. And that's why it has the whole planet with this thing circling around it. I love it, it's beautiful. You got the Queens Museum right there. And then we're gonna go over to the New York State Pavilion too, which is so cool. Hey Jacob, where are we now? We're in front of the Queens Museum, which is an art museum, mostly. It does, there's not a whole lot in there, but it's really cool. The main reason you wanna go in there is that they have a scale model of the entire city of New York. All five boroughs. It's really, really cool. It's a huge room, and you actually walk around the outside above it, and you can see everything. Even the airports have little air airplanes to take off and then land. So, what is this building, Jacob? This is the New York State Pavilion. It was built again for the 1965 World's Fair, I believe. But it was they had a bunch of pavilions. I was explaining this to Tall. Uh, different states, different cities, different companies. This was for New York State. Inside of the main area, the lower round area, they had a, this beautiful glass ceiling that was multiple colors, and the whole floor was a tile mirror of New York State and then they have these observation decks so you could take an elevator you can see on the side there you could take elevators up to the lower one and the top one and it would give you a panoramic view of Queens and New York City I actually have some aerial footage from my drone or photos rather of these towers available if you want to purchase one on my website is that okay can I yeah. put that check out Jacob.com yeah Link in the description, baby. Link in the description. Also, guys, something really exciting is happening right now. By the time this video comes out, it'll probably be irrelevant, but New York City is a beautiful, it's a beautiful place that has seasons. And uh, right now, we are at prime time in the world's cherry blossom season. So we actually have cherry blossom sakura trees that are blossoming right now. Look at it, Jacob walking around with a pink feet. This is insane. They're like walking around cotton candy right now. It's amazing. I'm so happy. I haven't like, you know, I spent last cherry blossom season in Japan and I got to see the blossom of the cherry blossoms in the country where they come from, but this is incredible. I didn't think I would be experiencing cherry blossom season this year again. Sakura! Sakura! Oh, Sakura! All right, so right behind me, within this park as well, we have the Queen Zoo. You guys know me. I'm not a huge fan of zoos, so I haven't really been promoting all the famous zoos in New York City. Like, if you want to visit a zoo, they're here. I personally am not like a huge fan, so I'm... I never really go in them anymore, but it is here. Should be noted, it's a famous zoo, the Queen Zoo. And for some reason, they have a dinosaur safari going on. Where are we now, Jacob? This is the Queen's Hall of Science. It's it's a science museum, it's geared towards kids. All the exhibits are, are meant to help kids learn about science, but I really wanna go in here. I haven't been in here, it seems really cool. They have these scale models of rockets and a bunch of cool stuff. Seems like a really cool place. Paul's on the phone with our friend Pierre, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of quick history about this place. This is Arthur Ashe Stadium. The US Open every year of tennis is held here. There's tons of small tennis courts. This place is filled with people during the US Open, but the uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium is the big one right here. And if you're a tennis fan, it's a great reason to come out here during the US Open. Beautifully made it right at the end of sunset to our last location for the day. We're at City Field, baby. Tell us about it, Jacob. It's where the Mets play. It's a pretty new field for the Mets. They used to have Shea Stadium. And I was just telling Tall, they have some really good food. They did some planning and put some good restaurants inside the field. It's a cool place to see a ball game if you're uh, in New York City and don't want to go to Yankee Stadium. City field right there, baby girl. Want to go watch a baseball game? Batter, batter, swing. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our video here in Astoria. JK, it's not Astoria. It's a pleasure, baby. Jacob, thank you so, so much for helping us tour around today. We always appreciate your support here on the channel. Thanks for letting me geek out. And I want to make sure that you guys check out Jacob down in the description below. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. Also, uh, if you guys want to subscribe, turn on those notifications. We are. I don't know why my microphone cut out, but I was trying to say you should subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single video. Also, watch the other videos because I'm covering literally every notable neighborhood in New York City, the entire city, everything you want to know. So make sure you're checking out the other episodes. Also, buy some merch. We're on screen right now. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. I love you guys a long time. Goodbye, Clats. I gotta slap them out though. I can't end the video. Oh, okay.